there's a few things I want to go over for you to be successful on today's activity. First, you're going to need to know what the speed of an object is. And speed is just a measure of how fast something is moving. When you want to calculate speed, the formula is pretty simple. You just do the distance that object traveled divided by the time. So on this worksheet today, when you have to find the speed, you just do distance over time. Make a note of that since you'll be using it today. The next thing I want to do is just review what are some of the things I'm going to look for when you do a graph. First, make sure you use graph paper. I've got lots. Next, get it nice and spread out. Use at least two-thirds of your page. You may um, need to skip some spaces on your axis so that a space might represent uh, just part of a second. So for example, on my graph, each space on the x-axis represents half a second so that I could get it nice and spread out. You also need to label your axes. Tell me, what are you graphing on the x and what are you graphing on the y? Another thing that you haven't had to do in this class before is include units. You need to tell me how many what does each space represent. Um, on my graph, I've got time in seconds on the x-axis and distance in centimeters on the y. Your graph is going to be the same. You should also have a title on your graphs for this class. And the title is always going to go in the format of whatever's on the y-axis versus whatever's on the x. So I've got my graph is titled Distance Versus Time. And your graph is going to have the same title today. The last thing you need is a line of best fit. This is that nice straight line that goes as close as possible to as many points as possible. It does need to be straight, so don't just connect the dots. If you look at mine, you can see that there's some points it doesn't go through. It misses a few of them. You also want to do this along the edge of a ruler or something similar. Again, to make sure that it's nice and straight. Now, one of the things you're going to have to do today is find the slope. So I just want to review with you how to find the slope and some common errors I see. Now, in math, when you find the slope, usually it's pretty for nice usually it's for pretty nice, neat functions where all the points fall right on the line. In science, because there's always some error in your data, things get a little bit messier. So the first thing you have to do is pick which points you're going to work with. You always want to pick points that are right on the line. So looking at my graph, I'm going to use this one and this one. Now, most of you probably know that slope is rise over run. But what I see a lot is students counting spaces. So they count just how many spaces they have to go up and call that their rise, how many they go over, and that's their run. The problem is that only works when you have the same scale on both axes. So if one space on your x-axis represents one second and one space on your y-axis represents one centimeter. Very, very often in science, it's going to make sense to have different scales, like on my graph. So what I have to do is go by the values for each point. So what I'm going to do is figure out the coordinates of each one. So if I look at this point that's higher up, it is at 7 seconds and 28 centimeters. If I look at that other point, that one is at 3.5 seconds. It's halfway between 3 and 4. And for a distance, it's at 14 centimeters. So now for my rise over run, I'm going to go by those values. So my rise, I can think of as y2 minus y1. So what that looks like is I'm going to do 28 centimeters 
minus 14 centimeters, which gets me 14. For my run, I'm going to do x2 minus x1. So that's 7 seconds minus 3.5, which comes out to be 3.5 seconds. So that means that the slope of this graph is 14 centimeters over 3.5 seconds. And if I plug that into a calculator, I get 4, and the unit on that is going to be centimeters per second. So that's how you're going to find slope in this class.